A program launched in 2010 to promote inclusion and gender equality, Generation Amazing, has benefited over 750,000 people worldwide while building over 30 football pitches in disadvantaged communities. Earlier, I spoke to Nasser al Khori, the program's director of the 2022 FIFA World Cup Organizing Committee, to shed light on Generation Amazing and started by asking him what the initiative is all about. So Generation Amazing Foundation is the human and social legacy uh, foundation under the World FIFA World Cup uh, Qatar 2022. And, uh, you know, we believe in sports for development and, you know, we u utilize the power and the transformative power of football to transform people's lives to the better. Uh, we focus mainly on youth development through football and a lot of programs around um, embedding different values of social inclusion and, and, uh, and social cohesion, promoting peace. Uh, promoting gender equality in a lot of communities that we work in. Now, so let me ask you this. Given that football is the uh, most popular sport in the continent, what is Generation Amazing doing differently from the other organizations involved in the continent to promote the sport in Africa? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one thing that we do uniquely is, is kind of understanding the, the local context of all, you know, before we deliver any program or designing uh, any football for development intervention. Uh, we do uh, a really deep uh, and thorough uh, needs analysis to understand the social issues in in, the, in, the, in that community. Um, I think one thing that we're doing uniquely as well in in, um, in Rwanda, specifically in Africa, uh, with our partnership with the Ministry of Sports and the rehabilitation, the National Rehabilitation Center, is that we have designed um, as part of the uh, rehabilitation process for the out of school children, uh, football uh, for development. Uh, activities and so we we have su supported the uh, one of the rehabilitation centers with facilities. So what are you doing uh, during the 2022 World Cup specifically in Qatar and what happens most importantly when the World Cup ends? Sure so um, so what we're going to be doing as Generation Amazing is that we're, we're, we've announced and uh, started recruiting uh, schools uh, so basically we've uh, designed a youth festival, uh, which is a year-long uh, school exchange uh, program that brings schools and, and, and youth from the 32 countries competing in the World Cup to be in Doha, to be with us here in person on the ground during the World Cup and, and kind of, you know, uh, join the youth festival, learn about football for development, learn about, uh, you know, we have asked our partners to deliver workshops and, and, and sessions. We're, you know, asking legends to join and come out and meet the youth. So it's a year-long capacity building program and it's, it's going to run virtually starting September with this, with the beginning of the school year and it's going to run until the end of the year with kind of the World Cup being in the middle around November. The Qatar 2022 World Cup will see the introduction of innovative technology such as the semi-automated offside system in world football. How have organizers coped with getting ready for the rollout of such innovations? There's a lot of aspects of innovation throughout uh, this World Cup specifically. I think, you know, there's that part of technology that, you know, um, has been, is going to be now implemented. And I, you know, I think there's also a lot of aspects of, you know, tech innovation around stadiums and the design of the stadiums, the cooling technologies in the stadiums, um, the sustainability aspects of all the stadiums, the, the air quality monitoring and, and kind of evaluation process. Um, you know, again, the, this is going to be kind of the most compact World Cup. So from a, uh, you know, footprint perspective, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the most accessible and, and easy, uh, you know, access uh, in terms of getting from one stadium to the next. You don't have to get on a flight. It's, everything is within a 60 kilometer radius. So I think from that perspective, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very interesting model. And uh, I think there's, it's probably the most innovative uh, uh, World Cup uh, experience for the fans and generally with FIFA as well.